Hello, this is Plato again from the Queen Alexandra Hospital in Portsmouth. Haha, <laughs> I love to learn and I'm meeting someone new today. Hello. 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 <laughs> What's your name? My name is Maria. Maria. So, where are you from? I'm from Portsmouth originally, so oh. nice and beside the seaside. Yes, lovely. Oh, I love the sea, the seaside. I'm from what you call the Solent. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. So, what kind of work is it that you do? So, I work in a micro laboratory and I'm an associate practitioner. So, we deal with lots of different microorganisms and we try and find out what ones it is that's making people unwell. Micro, so microbiology. Microbiology. Wow. So, the study of tiny organisms that you can't see with the naked eye. Oh, wow. Okay, well, so lots of, lots of different sized creatures. Lots of different sized ones and they can be found inside your body or outside your body and in a variety of different environments like the sea ah, yeah. or the soil or they can be found in ice and hot water. There's lots of different ones that you can find in the sea as well. Wow, wow, obviously I love the sea and so many creatures and my family but so many others, so so many fish, um, jellyfish, octopi, sharks and whales that you're saying as so many other invisible creatures I suppose. Many other invisible ones, yes. Wow, are they dangerous? Some are good for you but some can be bad for you, so like in the sea you've got some really nice sea creatures but equally you might have ones that are a bit more dangerous for you, like you get a shark. Yes, sharks can be very dangerous and very, very scary, but, oh wow, most of them are, are quite safe and quite, quite most friendly. Most are quite safe and friendly on you, but they may take an opportunity, if they get it, that they might take that and become a little bit more dangerous for you and make you feel unwell. Wow. Look, look at these then, if you can't see them, how do you test? So what we do is we will culture them, so we will grow them until they're at a certain size that we can see them. So the culture media that we will use for different bacteria is an agar media, and agar is made from seaweed ah, initially. Wow! <laughs> so something of the sea is really helpful for you. For it's dinosaur. very helpful, yes. <laughs> so oh. we'll put that into a mixture and sometimes we'll add different bits and pieces into them. Um, sometimes we'll add some selective things in there to grow different types of bacteria, oh. um, depending on what types we want to grow and from what part of the body they have been taken from. Wow, thank you. Okay, can, can you show me please? Can I show you? Yes, we've well, got some examples down here and yeah. obviously nice and coloured. I oh. guess your favourite one is going to be the green one. Oh yes, looking like yes, sea. green. Let me see with you. But these all do right. have different additives and our basic one is a blood agar plate. So what we do is we add um, 5-10% to of mammalian blood into it and this will provide the bacteria with different nutrients they will need to grow. Okay. So for example, if we look at a throat swab, some people get very poorly throat and what we can do is we can try and grow and see what presence of bacteria there are in their throat and try and work out which ones might be causing the illness. Oh wow, so so people with sore throats, um, you help, you help I suppose, identify what, um, what is wrong? That's right, yes. So we can, we will initially take a swab of their throat or a doctor will take a swab of their throat and I've got an example of a type of swab here. Ah, oh. um, so this little thing will be brushed against the back of your throat and hopefully pick up any bacteria on it that are there. Yeah. And when we get it into the laboratory, we'll put it onto our media plate and hopefully we will grow whatever is present in there. And then we can look through them and decide what was normal that can be found there and what could possibly be causing the problem with you. Wow, wow. So I suppose, if, as you say, there are many, many different creatures and it's making sure you identify some of the, the scary ones. Some of the scary uh, ones, yeah. yes. So um, what, what sort of uh, scary ones are there? So one of the most common ones we get in the laboratory is a group A streptococcus. Oh. So that's the type of bacteria that does take the opportunity and can cause very sore throat um, and lots of different signs and symptoms with that. And they will grow on this media quite happily. And what they tend to do is um, this media, you'll see a hemolysis on it, which is basically where the bacteria utilize the nutrients in the red blood cell. So they break them down and they utilize that for their growth. And you'll see like a clear halo around mm -hmm. the um, tiny colonies that we see growing mm -hmm. on here. Halo, you mean they eat the blood, I suppose? Yes, they do. Yes, so they will break the red blood cells open and they will eat the components that are in there. And that is what they will use as a nutrient to grow. Wow. Wow, oh, it's wonderful to know that actually uh, there are many uses of <laughs> seaweed and this is one of them. <laughs> that wow. is one of them, yes. Thank you. Very good to meet you, Maria. And you as Thank well. You. Hope okay. you have a nice rest of your day. Bless you.
Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.